So we really focused on neurosurgery as our first application set. And kind of core to that is, is how do you add much more advanced, much more intricate information to the surgeon that can actually guide their approach to surgery. So, so we developed software and hardware systems to better integrate that information into a surgical decision-making. Hi, everyone, and thank you for listening. I'm your host, Kerry Jordan. Welcome to our show where we talk with industry leaders at the forefront of manufacturing technology and best practices. Today, I'm speaking with Cameron Pirone, president and co-founder of Synaptive Medical, a global med tech and technology company that's based in Toronto and founded in 2012. Synaptive Medical is dedicated to solving surgical, imaging, and data challenges to enhance the quality of human lives. The company integrates MRI, surgical planning and navigation, robotic automation, digital microscopy, and informatic solutions to support neuro, spine, ENT, and plastics reconstructive procedures, which ultimately enables healthcare professionals to see patients like never before. This will be a great conversation because Synaptive Medical is a highly innovative organization, and Cameron has a wealth of experience in leadership, entrepreneurship, engineering, and medical biophysics. Cameron, welcome, and thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you very much. Really, really appreciate the chance to speak to you today. Well, great. Let's let's go ahead and get started. Let's get started with your journey. I'd love to learn more. And I also understand that Synaptive Medical is not your first company where you are part of the founding team. So what's inspired you to build and to lead as you have? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually uh, originally trained as an engineer and a system design engineer. So a little, little bit of everything, mechanical, electrical, software and then studied uh, medical biophysics in grad school. And I got very excited about medical technology and how can systems engineering be applied to advancements in, in medical imaging very specifically. Um, so I had the opportunity to start my first company out of Sunnybrook Hospital in Toronto and uh, grew that over five years. And it was extremely rewarding and, and energizing and was a successful exit and allowed us to reform the team and, and really go after a much bigger vision, which is really what we're doing at, at Synaptive Medical. So we built part of an MRI system with our first company, and now we build an entire MR system and an entire robotics infrastructure for doing surgery. So kind of stepwise increasing our engagement with what we can deliver out in the field, and each step's been more and more rewarding. That's great. Would you share a little bit more about Synaptive Medical and you know what the organization does? Yeah, so we are, we're a fully vertically integrated company. So we we believe in in you know designing, manufacturing, selling, and delivering, and, and maintaining our equipment out in the field. And uh, that that full vertical really gives that ability to work closely with the customers to continue to enhance, optimize, and and develop new elements of our technology. So we're about two hundred people in Toronto. We do manufacturing uh, downtown Toronto, which is a bit of a rarity, and uh, also have a manufacturing facility in, in London, Ontario. That's great. And so, I understand that. I mean, your organization has many exciting advancements. I wanted to talk about surgical planning and navigation because I understand it's really revolutionized. You know that area. Would you share maybe a little bit more about that, and then if you could highlight some of the key innovations in different products that have had. You know, such an impact on improving surgical outcomes and patient care. Yeah, we've we've long had a thesis of precision imaging guiding precision therapy, and and this is this has really become, I'd say, the hottest area in medicine today, is the idea of not just imaging on its own, but using that imaging to better guide very advanced therapeutics that are coming out, whether it's surgery, radiation therapy, or or really exciting new drugs that are on the market today. So you need that information to better guide how, how to manage that patient. So we really focused on neurosurgery as our first application set. And kind of core to that is, is how do you add much more advanced, much more intricate information to the surgeon that can actually guide their approach to surgery. So, so we developed software and hardware systems to better integrate that information into a surgical decision making. So speaking of, you know, integrations, you know, I'd, I'd love to dig into the technology. I mean, you know, on the show, we, we're always looking into, you know, what's the, the future of manufacturing technology? What are some of the trends that you see that's really been shaping manufacturing in the med tech landscape? Yeah, I, I think there's been these big trends towards insourcing and outsourcing. And, and certainly COVID is really, I think, accelerated people's view of, of how can we localize supply chain 
and manufacturing, I think, is is becoming a good word, right? It was a dirty word for a while. And uh, I think in healthcare, there's there's particularly interesting aspects is, is these tend to be very complex devices, you know, building MRI systems or surgical robots. So volume tends to be a bit lower, complexity much higher, and, and your your rigor for having a, a system that cannot fail is, is really essential. So so this kind of is think about like airline, you know, aircraft development, I think highly regulated industry. It's very similar in in, in healthcare. I think there's a lot more cost pressures on the healthcare system as well, where I think in the past, it tended to be very expensive piece of equipment in the hospital. And uh, that that was kind of tolerated. I, I don't think that's tolerated now. I think people really want very high quality equipment, but as, at a very competitive price. So that that's also changing the, the look of healthcare and how people develop. So people are getting very efficient at their manufacturing. And, and that localization, I think, is becoming a very big trend. Yeah, that's really interesting. And speaking of localization, it's it's really, you know, great to hear that you are, you know, local and, and keep, you know, that's within Toronto. That is that is pretty unique and, and fascinating. So when we're thinking about Synaptive Medical and the specific technologies that you are leveraging, why did you choose to incorporate, you know, different manufacturing technologies? You know, I could understand that, as you said, the products that you're manufacturing could be very, very sophisticated and complex. So, you know, what role did technology play at Synaptive Medical and, you know, sort of that overall digital transformation strategy? Yeah, I'd say kind of focusing on our two big pieces of, of hardware. One is a robotic optic system, and then one is an MRI system. So one collects photons, one, one images protons. And so each system is really a complex structure from on the, on the robotic side, complicated lensing technology, camera, excitation, lasers set on a robotic system that has to be extremely stable. And, and one of the things that, that I think sets us aside from everyone else is we we design the entire system. And when you do that, you can optimize the performance of the entire system. So we don't make part of it, we take ownership of the whole. And that's how we can ensure that we provide the best possible output, which is really a digital image. And likewise on the MRI system, our prior company made part of the MRI system. We made the antenna that would collect the signal. And then in working with some of the major vendors, technologies out there, we thought there could be a really highly differentiated approach to actually reducing the magnetic field strength, making it uh, superconducting, but not requiring cryogen, and then really amplifying the performance of the real hardware components of the system, things like gradients and RF transmitters. So again, the same approach of having an entire system and optimizing the system to get the best end product, which is again, a digital image. So we really had to take ownership for the entire system. And in many cases, that meant actually bringing core technology in-house that is really IP intensive, that that we want to own, that we we really take that full uh, committed ownership and optimization for. Now, are, the, are those aspects of the business so different that you do need to keep them separate or do you have them consolidated on a single system? They tend to be the different floors in our facility, even, even different locations, but there's just so much similarity from a design perspective and even our testing approaches, how we service, how we implement the systems. So I'd say there's much more similarity, even though the actual core physics technology is very different. You know, we're still building sensors. We're still really focusing on automation, both in clinical use, but in the actual practice of manufacturing as well. And and so I'd say there's much more similarities, even though I think we're the only company in the world that's building both optical and MR systems. These tend to be very different companies. GE, Siemens tend to make the MRIs. You have Zeiss, Leica doing the optical systems. We're really the first company to take the approach that we, we, we do this all in-house ourselves. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I know that data collection is really important to your business. And I'm just thinking about, you know, the the different aspects. And yet they are, you know, as you said, fairly, fairly similar to some extent. How do you manage data collection and analysis? And how is that leveraged in your business? Yeah, our, our end product really is data. You know, we're product providing new and better data to clinicians so they make better decisions. Those decisions end up impacting patient outcomes, things like, you know, blood loss, length of stay, you know, really definitive functional outcome data for a patient. So that's all measured in digital and within the hospital system. 
we create the data that makes those procedures better. And then the product and how it's manufactured contributes to the quality of that output of that data. So it's everything from incoming inspection of, of components that are, that are really highly accurate systems. We actually have some optical uh, components that are down to nanometer measurements where you, you, you actually translate that to actual output in, in optical performance. We have many in-process tests. And then we test the system before it goes in the field. We test it once it's in the field. And then we actually test clinical performance when it's out there as well. So many very detailed touch points with a lot of information. We're also highly regulated from an ISO perspective. We have ISO 1345 MDSAP certification. And so that requires that all the business operations are digital as well. So, so I think that's, that's very important from design control to your quality elements of your system and your measurements of, of your output of your performance, your technology, and that's linked to each serial number in each product. So highly intensive uh, digitization, I'd say. Yes. And there must be so much information. How do you manage it all? How do you store it? Do you have multiple systems that you kind of connect? So there's a single workflow or do you intentionally keep them separate? Because I don't know, maybe compliance requirements. Just curious how you manage all that data. Yeah, there, there's many, many systems. And I think that's one of the interesting things as you grow as a company, you, you need to evolve these systems as well. So the, I think in medical, a lot of people started out with maybe uh, paper-based non-digital systems, and, and it's really an important transition you need to make to get to those digital systems. Your vendor choice might change over time as you, you scale, as you're adding in different functional operations on the company as well. So I think it's really important to continue to evolve those platforms. Data security is really paramount. I think there's there's been so many instances of, of companies being hacked that that's really important to make sure that that's controlled very well. And in our field as medical device customers, uh, that that's a, a very major concern on their side too. So data security, scalability, making sure our systems are compliant to the different regulatory approvals, uh, but also trying to simplify things. You know, alongside with getting heavier data. Can, you can really be swimming in too much data and then you really lose the most relevant information to drive your business. So I think alongside the digitization is the importance of simplification. And, and that's an initiative we check in on very often. Yeah, that's interesting, especially I can imagine as an organization grows, initially it might be cumbersome to bring on a lot of technology. But once you hit a point, you have to in order to scale. And and you have to, as you said, make sure that it's simple. How do you see technology helping your organization continue to scale and to build in flexibility? Yeah, I think that flexibility is absolutely key. You know, we we particularly we're we're a growing company, kind of doubling our our output of our product every every year. So that's a that's a pretty big lift for a company. We we cover all quadrants of the world. We have products in Australia, Thailand, Vietnam, Pakistan, through the Gulf region. We, we really are 24 seven and uh, surgeries are happening 24 hours a day in all regions. So, so we need to be on all the time in all regions with many different functions of the company. So the synergy between the different electronic systems is, is really essential for us, getting those right data points and making sure they're flowing up to management so that we can really track the important metrics for the company and, and really making sure those are linked all the way to our corporate goals and objectives that we check in on. So, so that synergy across those systems is important. I know there's a lot of excitement over AI technologies. We, we leverage AI in our products. We're actually starting to leverage it in the product development process as well. And I think we're going to see bigger opportunities to leverage it in the manufacturing processing itself as well. So we do do a lot of automation, a lot of testing. And I think as you start uh, looking naturally and in inferences in the data sets, having tools that can help you do that more efficiently, I think are going to be a, a really big help as well. Well, now I absolutely have to ask you more about AI. That is so fascinating. How, how are you incorporating it within development and within manufacturing? What are some of the use cases or some of the value that you see? Yeah, so we, we, we have a lot of data. So we, we bring in our, I'd say, our optical components of our system. And we run it through all the different scenarios that they're used in, in clinical cases. And we actually create quantitative data, which I think is really different than a lot of our competitors, a lot of companies in the field. They tend to create an image that is interpreted. We, we like pulling quantitative information from that, from, from those data sets. So it's really important to be able to 
make sure that consistency is there throughout the entire process. There's many different areas that you ensure that there's performance between the components of the system. So making sure that those are hitting really predefined specifications so that you can actually back solve and see if there's components that, that may be in or out of spec. So today it really is about the aggregation of the data. And I think as we are driving forward and increasing our volumes, it'll be about the introspection of that data to be able to get ahead and find things like supplier issues that, that might be picked up earlier to be able to pick up things before you're, you're seeing things coming out of spec. Yeah, it is interesting the way that AI can pick up on patterns and then make recommendations. And that that's fascinating. I also wanted to ask you, so you mentioned the global nature of your organization, and that is such exciting growth. How do you manage the the culture of innovation that you've built? How do you sort of maintain and sustain that culture? Yeah, you know, I think part part of why we manufacture, part of why we have this this continuity with our customer is so that we can continue to push the boundaries. So we are building MRI systems and optical systems that are seeing things no one's seen before. And that means we're pushing technology past the limits of, of what's done today. And so we really do push not only our own employees, but our suppliers to do things they haven't done before. And that's very exciting. You know, that that really is on the edge of exploration. And so the, the other element that's important with that is never, never kind of be satisfied, never stop, you know, never stop innovating, never wait for someone else to out innovate you. We want to be at the cutting edge and then being that cutting edge, driving things forward as well. So that means total ownership of what you're doing, right? So if if you are pushing, let's say, the performance of an optical system to a resolution that's never been achieved, you can't go out there and just specify the components. They, they, they don't exist. So it really is a hand-in-hand -hand relationship with the suppliers to make sure we can support that and the customers so that we are really driving the product in the right direction so that you're getting useful information that's actually in drive better patient outcomes. Well, I have to ask you about advice because, you know, you have so much experience in, of course, you know, with founding Synaptive Medical, with entrepreneurship in, in your previous organization as well. So much that you've invested in terms of education and leadership across your organization. What advice do you have for other business leaders that are thinking about taking their business to the next level. Maybe they're looking at, you know, considering an advanced technology such as AI and different types of automation. What would you say to them? Yeah, I think in, it's specifically in medical technology, I think I think manufacturing is a good thing. You know, and, and if your core value proposition is building something, that that's that's good. You should wrap your hands around that. And and I think, you know, the quality around that, the the innovation around it, the IP. That that's important ownership, and that that typically is something you're manufacturing. It's a combination of patents and know-how, right? And in trade secrets, so that's an important balance to be to be able to manage. I think in the new field, particularly in med device, margin is important. Uh, Cogs is important. Customers are going to be demanding more from you, and and you need to be able to not just think about creating a product that is the best and the most innovative, but have a plan for how you can make it more accessible to your customers. And that's often not something you think of upfront, but it's really essential planning as you go forward because costs can get out of hand quickly. You know, we just came out of this whole cycle post COVID where there was a lot of limitations in the supply chain and people really had to bolster up their supply chain and, and cost, you know, has to come at the same time as quality and making sure you have a really rigid supply chain as well. Are you still seeing challenges with supply chain? I think we were we were very quick to address that in early cycle of COVID. So I think we were a bit of ahead of the curve. We've seen it improve significantly. I, I wouldn't say that it's perfect now, but I think we've seen a lot more investment in the North American supply chain that we're starting to see real benefits from. We're, we're starting to see people, I think there's a long trend where people are getting out of kind of fundamental machining and, and building of electronic components. And that's coming back now. And, and I think that's really exciting. So I think we're seeing great improvements in, in the supply chain. That's great. That's great. And another thing that you had mentioned there was in regards to cost. I, you know, I'm, I'm really curious to, to hear, you know, how this is affecting businesses. Do you still see cost fluctuating pretty high or what is, how is that impacting you now? Yeah, I think you're seeing, you know, labor costs have, have continued to kind of disrupt the field. We we see it from a hospital perspective. 
Yeah. Where there was a lot of people did retire out of healthcare after going through the crisis. It was kind of that, mm-hmm. that final push. And healthcare demand is going up very rapidly. And so people are an aging population. People are, are more complex conditions. And so we're trying to squeeze more out of every healthcare dollar. And that's putting pressure on the hospitals. So, so companies need to innovate to provide the technology to make it more efficient and also reduce that labor burden. And with that, people are actually requiring more cost-effective technologies as well. So, it, so it's really a combination of things that, that the customers really asking vendors for, and then vendors need to respond to and need to, to do so with their suppliers as well. So I think we're all in it as a stakeholders, you know, employees, suppliers, customers, and need to work together for this, this goal to be able to deliver much better healthcare at a much better affordable price. And that's exciting, but it's challenging. Agreed. There's so much opportunity, but as you said, a lot of challenge that needs to get solved. And there is such a role for so many to play in the ecosystem to help reduce that and to improve the lives of you know these patients. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I uh, wanted to ask you what's next for Synaptive Medical and perhaps what's next in terms of the technologies that you're excited about, because you are at the forefront, especially incorporating AI and automation within your business. And of course, the advanced medical technologies that you manufacture. What's next? What are you excited about? Yeah, we've worked very hard to develop our, our platforms. And, and I think that's where we're really unique. We have many technologies linked together by a common architecture. And, and that's very rare. You know, typically products are made on their own in isolation. Typically they're integrated by a larger company and, and they're trying to glue together architectures that, that were totally independently developed. And typically those teams are gone too. So this ability to really have a fully in, integrated system is totally unique in the field. It's why we really drove the the company along a complex path path of of developing four totally unique technologies, but they ultimately serve a single procedure and a single patient. And so we're really excited about showing the benefit of that integration. And so for instance, we're able to show unprecedented accuracy in our MRI. So things like radio surgery and neurosurgery, you expect submillimeter precision. But traditionally, MRI systems don't provide that. So we've been able to actually improve the precision tenfold and be able to, most recently, we were able to show 0.2 millimeter accuracy on an MR scan, where typically you'd have a couple millimeters at best. So we're excited about how this precision is going to drive better care for for further afield. So now that we have this platform, we're excited about delivering into different venues of care, into different parts of the world. And then be able to work with our customers to actually enhance what these systems can do. So, so it's taken a long time to get to that platform. And now it's really about that expansion that we've all worked very hard for and very excited to do. Oh, that's great. That's great. I'm so excited. That's incredible precision that you're able to create. It is. And, and it really is. It is groundbreaking in MRI. That, that, is, that is a world first. And, and it actually is really excitingly and interestingly falls back to the manufacturing process where every little coil, every winding has to be precise because that translates to the control of your field and that field control translates to the ultimate accuracy of your imaging. So we're really excited to see that end goal, that that end result and uh, excited to start telling the world about it. I feel like what you do impacts all of us some way, somehow. So, (laughs) well, was there anything that I didn't ask you about that you wanted to share with us today? Yeah, I'd maybe I'll just mention, you know, I think we've we've we're all aspiring and sensitive to to what we can do environmentally as well. You know, the and, and medical technology is often felt as an, an after then. You know, it's typically kind of low volume, you think about it as low impact, but there are some really big impacts. Single use devices in hospitals are, you know, typically incinerated. MRI systems typically use tens of thousands of liters of helium to cool these systems. And now that there's a lot of pressure on on things like access to helium for oil well exploration, we do need to come up with very new innovative technologies, not just to serve the patient, but to think about the environmental context. So tens of thousands of helium has a, has a really big impact on, on the environment in terms of exploration. So I think at the same time that we're going to be driving towards a better cost equation and better outcomes, we have this next kind of design requirement on on what we do to make sure we're doing it in a green environment. And and I think that that's that's the next exciting wave that we'll see coming forward as well. 
taking care of human lives in so many different ways, not just through surgical procedures, but also the environment. Yeah. Incredible. And they're interconnected. We all know that as well. So Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm so glad you brought that up because, I mean, that really is at the forefront of manufacturing. I mean, there's so many implications for innovations, different technologies, materials, processes, how we measure and report. So that's that's great. I'm glad to hear that that's a focus for Synaptive Medical. Absolutely. Well, this has been wonderful, really fascinating to hear about all the different innovations and the growth that you have achieved. Congratulations. You know, as we wrap up, for anyone who wants to learn more about you or Synaptive Medical, where would you direct them? Uh, LinkedIn is great, Cameron Piron. And also my email would be fine. So Cameron.Piron at SynaptiveMedical.com. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Cameron. This has been a wonderful conversation. It was a real pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. That was Cameron Piron, president and co-founder of Synaptive Medical. And to everyone listening, thank you so much for being a part of the future of manufacturing. 